I know I'm not supposed to say this. I hate the Heisman. What if I told you that college football's most prestigious trophy has been a curse for winning quarterbacks of the 2000s? Heisman Trophy winners define seasons, and many fans tend to take for granted that these will be future stars on Sundays. But that is not always the case. We look at you as a great college player. Do you look at yourself as not for the NFL, misread, placed in the, with the wrong team, wrong time? Every team, every, every, everywhere I've been, I've enjoyed it. I've loved it. What? ESPN's coverage of the Heisman Trophy award ceremony and Nissan's ad campaigns have made winners appear to be larger than life. While this may properly recognize these players as college legends, it also sets a very high bar for the recipients. Some have lived up to their lofty collegiate status. And the 2023 AP Most Valuable Player is Lamar Jackson. While others simply fizzled out. Hey, how is your mom partying? Yeah. There's a difference between partying and being out of control. Yeah. In this millennia, all 24 winners have been offensive players, and 20 of the 24 winners have been quarterbacks. This made me wonder, how many of these QBs were successful in the NFL? The answer to this question may surprise you, because after my research, it surprised me. Welcome back to Unlikely Success. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe and comment to support the channel. Let's get into the Heisman Trophy quarterbacks of the 2000s. Part 1. Setting the Stage in a sport steeped in traditions, the Heisman Trophy sets itself apart with a deep history. There has been a winner every year since 1935, and each has had high visibility. In recent years, this has been due to the previously mentioned media coverage of the award. I just want to mention one more time that I stumbled upon this topic by accident. My original intention was to make a video on Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels being the top two draft picks and having each one a Heisman. But after a closer look, I realized there was a bigger story. And that story was the success thereof of the past winners in the NFL. Here are some high level stats that showcase exactly what I mean. Out of 20 Heisman winning quarterbacks drafted since 2000, 16 have been first round picks, including 12 of those that were number one or number two overall. They have played in nearly 1,000 regular season games. Only five have winning records. The group has won three MVPs, and only four of them managed success with the teams that originally drafted them. The regular season performance and draft positions only tell part of the story. It gets even juicier when we look at the playoffs. Their collective playoff record is 15 and 19. Only two have made it to the Super Bowl, and not a single one has lifted a Lombardi trophy as a starting quarterback since Jim Plunkett. He won his Heisman Trophy in 1971 and he won the 1981 Super Bowl. Yeah, it's been 40 years. 40 years. Not a great track record. When I read the last stat in my research, my mouth literally dropped. I had to triple check that stat, and let me tell you. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. Of course, half of these guys were drafted to rebuilding teams. A few had injuries, and a few were not even starting caliber quarterback prospects to begin with, but the stats, are jarring. Now that we have the high level information, we can take a deeper look at each winner with the end goal of determining who's the best of this group. Part two, who are the winners and what happened to them? Let's start with Chris Wenke, the winner in 2000. Chris Wenke is notable as the oldest player to ever win a Heisman Trophy. He is also the first winner to not be a consensus All-American. He would be drafted by the Carolina Panthers in the fourth round and he was asked to start immediately. And let me tell you, it did not go well. After he compiled a 1-15 record with the Panthers, Wenke would start only four more games in the NFL over his next four seasons. He would finish his career with a 2-18 record, threw for 15 touchdowns and 26 interceptions, and had a 54.4 completion percentage. Chris was a fourth round pick, and he should not have been seen as a future star given his age, but the Panthers gave him a fair shot. He was 30 in his second season, and the team decided to turn to younger options as they rebuilt. 2001's winner was Eric Crouch. Crouch never played a down in the NFL. He was a third round draft pick of the St. Louis Rams, who tagged him as a wide receiver. After being drafted, he would be injured in rookie training camp and request to play quarterback. The Rams would cut Crouch before he ever played an NFL snap, and he would never find his way onto another active roster. Crouch was an amazing athlete in college and could have been a very strong slot wide receiver in my view, but he was unwilling. He pursued playing quarterback in a few other leagues, but it never worked out. 2002's winner, Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer is our first success on the list. After a strong senior season at USC, he would be drafted first overall by the Cincinnati Bengals. He would lead the team to two playoff appearances, throw for 154 touchdowns, and in all, play seven years for the club. 
Unfortunately, his time with the Bengals did not end on a good note, as he demanded a trade and has not spoken favorably about them since. He would be traded to the Raiders for a first and a second round pick, and this did not work out for the acquiring Oakland squad. Palmer's time there would end in an 8-16 record, and it marked three straight losing seasons as he looked washed. That was until a second trade occurred, which would see him get sent to the Arizona Cardinals. Palmer was even quoted as saying, I've got a lot of tread left on my tires. As it turns out, he was right. He was paired up with new head coach Bruce Arians, and together they rebuilt the mid-30-year-old's career. Over the next three seasons, Arizona would go 29-9 and Palmer starts. He'd throw for 70 touchdowns, finish second in MVP, and made the NFC Championship, where they would lose to Cam Newton. More to come on him later. Carson would play two more years with Arizona, but the team never got back to the NFC Championship. For his career, he was 92-88-1, and won, with 294 touchdowns and 187 picks. He would finish his career with a 1-3 playoff record, two top five MVP finishes, and currently sits 15th in both passing yards and touchdowns. We're only three quarterbacks in, but he is clearly the best of our bunch so far. Well, from a regular season perspective, look, Susie, he's put up some big time numbers. I mean, 44,000 yards, almost 300 touchdowns, 285 to be exact, you know, over an 80 QBR. He's done some great things. It's just the postseason, and that's what Bruce is referring to here. That's where Carson has fallen short. He's only one in three in the postseason. His touchdown to interception ratio is negative. I think it's five to seven touch, five touchdowns, seven interceptions, 55% completion percentage. He hasn't performed at his best in the biggest moments, and he will need to win it all in order in order to be considered there. But look, his, his uh, regular season statistics, you'd put them up against just about anybody. 2003's winner, Jason White, was a surprise to everyone at Oklahoma, where he played his college football. Before there was Michael Penix Jr., there was Jason White. He would suffer two knee injuries and win a very unlikely Heisman Trophy. He was even a finalist in 2004, but a pro career was not meant to be. White went undrafted, and after a pair of years under contract with the Titans, he would end his NFL dreams. He was a great college story, but the injuries caught up to him. 2004's winner, Matt Leiner, was a major college football star. He won his Heisman Trophy at USC when it was must-watch college football. He played on one of the greatest teams in college football history, and he led them to back-to-back -back national championship appearances, winning one and losing one in an instant classic to Vince Young that was in 2005. And let me tell you, it was epic. As he entered the NFL draft, the lefty was selected 10th overall by the Arizona Cardinals. He was never able to reach the heights of his college stardom, as he would finish with an 8-10 record, throw for 15 touchdowns and 21 interceptions, and he'd be replaced by one of my personal favorite quarterbacks of all time, Kurt Warner, who would revive his career by leading the team to a Super Bowl. Leinart falls in line with the trend that we're seeing here, of successful college quarterback, wins the Heisman, but does not live up to the hype in the NFL. Even my rookie year, I played pretty well. We were like, okay, and then I, I, I hurt my AC the last game of the year. But I was playing well, whatever, and then, okay, then the offseason, then Danny gets fired. New coaching staff comes in, and that's where, for me personally, went all downhill. 2006 winner was Troy Smith, and I want to preface this by saying it was an odd year for the Heisman. The finalists were Steve Slayton, Brady Quinn, Derek McFadden, and our winner, Troy Smith. All great players, but not exactly a memorable group. Troy Smith was the last pick of the fifth round by the Baltimore Ravens. He started eight games in four seasons. He threw for eight touchdowns and five interceptions. Serviceable backup, but not a star. 2007's winner is someone everyone will remember, Tim Tebow. Tebow legitimately has a case for the best college career ever. He was an inspiring leader who stood out on Urban Meyer's Florida Gator football team, and he became a beloved part of sports in the late 2000s. Then he went to the NFL where he would be drafted 25th overall, despite concerns over his passing abilities. The Denver Broncos, coached by Josh McDaniels, were convinced they could develop the Heisman winner. They were incorrect. Over the course of two seasons, he would go eight and six with a 48% completion percentage and one of the craziest playoff wins ever, but it was all for naught. Tim would be traded to the New York Jets for a pair of late round picks, and he would never start another NFL game. Multiple teams asked him to play tight end, but things were just not meant to be for Tebow. Everything he does, everything that happens to him, shatters the mold. It's like, like a Hollywood You can't make this up. No, I'm serious. You cannot make it up. Seriously, how, yeah. how could you have imagined even two weeks ago, Peyton Manning would choose the Denver Broncos and that Tim Tebow would be on the trading block? 2008's winner, Sam Bradford, is a player that broke my heart as a Rams fan. 
NFL scout Gil Brandt was quoted as saying, Bradford's pro day was the most impressive he had seen since Troy Aikman. Sam was renowned for his accuracy and football IQ at Oklahoma, being considered a perfect fit for a West Coast offense. He would win Rookie of the Year in 2010, but his eight-year career never lived up to the hype. Half of his seasons were ruined by injuries, and he only posted a winning record one time, which was 2-0. He finished with a 34-48 record, never played in a playoff game, and had 103 touchdowns and 61 picks. To this day, I still think that Sam Bradford was a talented enough quarterback to have won a Super Bowl if he was placed in the right situation. People said you can't give up a first round draft pick for Sam Bradford. I said, you tell me how many first round draft picks this year are worth four or five points a game, which is what a solid quarterback is. 2010's winner, Cam Newton, started his career as Tim Tebow's backup at the University of Florida. But after a bumpy ride there and a junior college season, he found his way to Auburn. At Auburn, a phenomenal season was under scrutiny due to a pay-for-play scandal with Cecil Newton involved, which was Cam's father. But Cam was considered to be not involved and he would go on to win both the national championship and Heisman Trophy. Considered one of the most athletic quarterback prospects ever, he would be selected first overall by the Carolina Panthers. Cam would go on to win Rookie of the Year and an MVP but he only had three seasons with a winning record. Newton was 75, 68, and one in the regular season. He was three and four in the playoffs and had a Super Bowl appearance. He has 5,628 rushing yards and 75 rushing touchdowns, but he never developed into an elite passer. His career completion percentage is a shade under 60%, and he only threw for more than 25 touchdowns once. Yet he is clearly gonna be in the running for the best quarterback on this list. And I remember late in that game, 14 to 10, Cam Newton getting stripped of the ball. You are carrying the hopes and dreams of your team, and he would not stick his face down there and go get that ball. 2011's winner, RG3, is a what-if story. He was a standout quarterback at Baylor, but he would suffer an ACL tear in his sophomore season. Two years later, in his final season, is where he would really see his rise. He would win the Heisman and demonstrate his abilities as both a passer and a runner. After the standout year, he would enter the NFL draft. RG3 was very nearly a St. Louis Ram but the Washington Redskins would make an offer that could not be refused. After drafting him second overall, Washington would reap immediate rewards, as their young quarterback won Rookie of the Year and led the team to the playoffs. In a sad turn of events, the young QB would injure his right knee in a late season game against the Ravens. He would then tear his ACL, LCL, and meniscus less than a month later in his only playoff appearance as a starter. RG3 was never the same after this injury. He would lose his starting job in Washington to Kirk Cousins, and he never got a second chance as a starter with another team. His 16-26 and 26 record is an underachieving one, but it's very hard to blame him for it. He was a victim of injuries. Well, the one thing I'd like to say is that when you take a look at RG's career, what Robert has really done is, you know, his rookie year, he was, I mean, off the charts. Every type of record he broke. For those keeping score, we've had two successful QBs in our first 10, with one MVP and one Super Bowl appearance but it must get better, right? Well, that's not gonna be the case with 2012's winner, Johnny Manziel. Johnny Football is one of my favorite college football players ever. His exciting play style and attitude made him can't miss TV, and the publicity he garnered for payments in college played a big part in today's NIL structure. He is the first freshman to win a Heisman Trophy and very nearly won a second. I have a full video on his rise and fall in the channel's archive, you should check it out if you get some time and want to know more about his college and NFL careers. After a scandal-filled career at Texas A&M, Johnny Football ran to the NFL. He was a polarizing prospect to say the least, but the Cleveland Browns decided to take a chance with the 22nd overall pick. Let's just say this didn't work out well. Manziel would go 2-6 and six as a starter. He threw 7 touchdowns and 7 interceptions. It was a career marred with off-field issues and it lasted only 2 seasons. Johnny Manziel will become even bigger in the city of Cleveland than his buddy and business partner LeBron James ever was. <laughs> 2013's winner Jameis Winston is still in the NFL. Following Johnny Manziel's Heisman winning season, Jameis would win his trophy as a freshman at Florida State. He would also win a national championship, but he had several off-field situations that will not be covered in this video as they are unrelated to the topic. Winston would play in and nearly win a second national championship before entering the NFL Draft. After being selected first overall by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Winston would eat a W, have one winning season with the team, notoriously have a 30 touchdown, 30 pick season, and get replaced by Tom Brady on his way out of Tampa. It's not that Jameis was bad, but his decision making was not improving enough for the Bucs to win games. Since leaving Tampa, he served as the Saints backup, 
and with a 34-46 and 46 record and a single playoff appearance as a reserve, he has not lived up to the guy from Florida State who won a Heisman and a national championship. Jameis is balling. Yeah, look at his stats. Oh, I'm balling, he said. If I wasn't throwing the picks, I'd be the best of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Jameis Winston, I think, we said this before Jameis Winston came out and said that he's looking for 30 to 35 million a year. We said that if Jameis could have a little self-awareness and understand that he doesn't deserve what Patrick Mahomes is going to get and doesn't deserve what Aaron Rodgers gets. Yeah, now maybe his next contract, the next four years, he'll be able to learn how to be a quarterback that not only takes care of his team, but stops taking care of the other team as well. 2014's winner, Marcus Mariota, was the first Hawaiian-born winner of the Heisman after an amazing 2014 season. He would lose the national championship game, and he would enter the NFL draft. Debates would immediately begin comparing Mariota and Jameis Winston's ability, as they were both members of the same draft class, with Winston winning out and Marcus being the second overall pick by the Tennessee Titans. Like Winston, Marcus would not develop as the Titans hoped. He would only throw for more than 25 touchdowns once, and after peaking in year two, the team would decide to move on. He has served as a Raiders and Falcons backup, but very clearly also did not live up to his college hype. Marcus is a, a great person, a great teammate. You can go on and on about Marcus and how he is as a human being. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, he just a great dude. The 2016 winner, Lamar Jackson, has a previous video on the channel, and it covers his rise in depth. But for our list's sake, just like Johnny Manziel, I will highlight some of his accomplishments here. Lamar Jackson had one of the more incredible college careers as a dual threat quarterback at Louisville. Jackson won the Heisman Trophy in dominant fashion as a sophomore and nearly won as a junior before entering the NFL draft. Lamar would slide to the 32nd pick of the first round and become part of the Baltimore Ravens. Questions swirled about his ability as a passer and many asked him to play wide receiver. Fortunately for him and the NFL, the Ravens had a plan. That plan was adopting a unique offense to highlight their quarterback skills that they would commit to fully after his rookie season. Jackson has won two MVPs in his first six seasons, compiled a 58-19 record, and established himself as the greatest rushing quarterback of all time. Even with all of this, there is still one lingering question. Can Lamar win a Super Bowl? He's a bright star on our list, and he has fully lived up to the Heisman hype without a doubt. But it remains to be seen. Is he ever going to be able to hoist the Lombardi Trophy? The issue for Lamar that we are now more than a half decade into is every single year, his worst game of the year is the playoff game they lose. It's not just like, oh, the guy doesn't have a ring. It's every single year in the postseason, he has a terrible game. 2017's winner is another one where we have a full video. Baker Mayfield. Baker was a polarizing figure in college who planted his flag at THE Ohio State University, carried a brash attitude, and made no apologies for it. After very nearly beating Georgia in a semifinal game that was an instant classic, Baker would enter the NFL Draft. The Cleveland Browns would decide to select him first overall, and he injected energy into the franchise instantly. Cleveland had won four games over the last three seasons, but Baker led them to six wins as a rookie. And he would even be the quarterback for Cleveland's first playoff win in 18 years. But after playing his fourth season through several injuries, the Browns would make a trade for Deshaun Watson. Baker would be traded to the Panthers, play for the Rams, and land with the Bucks, where he recently led another playoff run. Baker has a 40-46 and record, 2-2 two and two record in the playoffs, and a distinct leadership style. He is not likely to become a top five quarterback in the NFL, but he has been a very capable starter. I got out of my car and said, hey, man, what do you guys think about Baker Mayfield? Y'all like him? Yeah. He said, no. I said, man, what did Baker do? He said, we love him. 2018's winner made it back-to-back -back for Oklahoma. That would be Kyler Murray. He replaced Baker Mayfield and electrified college football. He was on his way to play baseball for the Oakland A's until he won the Heisman Trophy for the Sooners. He would go on to be selected first overall by the Arizona Cardinals, who had spent a first-round pick the previous year on Josh Rosen. But Murray was clearly their guy. Kyler won Rookie of the Year, appeared to be ready to become a superstar after a playoff run in his third year, but things have not continued on this upward trajectory. The Cardinals put a clause in his contract that required him to study the playbook more, and injuries limited the last two seasons. He has a 28-36-1 record, and he's 0-1 in the playoffs, but it's still very possible Murray finds his way back to his earlier form. Why am I going to draft Kyler Murray number one, give away Josh Rosen, he gets banged in the leg a couple times, goes, I'm out, baseball. 2019's winner, 
Joe Burrow may have had the greatest college season ever at LSU, and we also covered him in a full video on this channel. Burrow would be selected first overall by the Bengals, and after showing signs of promise in his rookie season, it would be cut short due to injury. Joe would return from injury and play his way into being one of the NFL's best quarterbacks. He is still the only quarterback not named Tom Brady to beat Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs, and with a Super Bowl appearance, he has a legitimate shot at breaking this curse. Joe has a 29, 22, and 1 record, and he's 5-2 and two in the playoffs. Injuries may be the only thing preventing him from living up to his lofty stature as an NFL elite quarterback, as they have cut half his professional seasons short. How would you describe Joe Burrow if I had never seen him play? I love the way he plays. I love the way he played in college. What I like about him most, however, and why I think he is a great player, uh, he's, he's really talented. But I think when you start looking at quarterbacks, I, I, I think there's more to it. I think it's the intangibles, and he clearly has it. So he's got an edge to him that right from the beginning, even last year, you know, right from the start, and even when he was coming out of college, you could just tell, this guy's wired a little bit differently. Nothing's too big for him. He, he's confident he's gonna be able to come in and compete. And then the organization did a good job around him, but I, I'm, I'm a big fan. I mean, a big fan of his. 2021's winner, Bryce Young, was a star at Alabama. He played with two first round wide receivers and showcased poise, accuracy and command in his Heisman season. But the question surrounding him in the NFL was always his size. Young is under six foot and 200 pounds, and NFL scouts have traditionally seen this as a durability concern. He was still selected first overall ahead of CJ Stroud, and in his first season, Bryce looked bad on an awful Carolina Panthers team. Only time will tell if he can turn things around. Bryce Young, how would you assess what, like if you're looking at handicapping him, as an analyst and a former quarterback, what would you say to Carolina fans? I'd say uh, usually you have to see how a, a player is going to react, right? When you go through adversity like that, when people are tossing the bust word at you and saying you're a failure and all those things, how are you emotionally um, mature enough to deal with it? And I think Bryce Young's an incredibly mature, emotional young man. I really do. So I don't have any fear in him being able to weather it and doing well and getting better in year two, regardless of who is at the helm. My only fear is the team is awful. 2022 and 2023 for our purpose are gonna be lumped together. And that would be Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels. The latest two additions to the list were drafted first and second overall in the 2024 draft. Caleb appears to be in a good situation with the Bears, but he will have to overcome the NFL's worst franchise for quarterbacks historically. Jaden is going to a Washington football team that has not had a winning record since 2016 and has not won a playoff game since 2005. Both players have electric capabilities, but it will remain to be seen if they can break the curse. I'm going to reserve the right to revisit their stories in the coming years as we compile more and more evidence. Now that we have our candidates covered, there are four that stand out above the rest. Carson Palmer, Cam Newton, Lamar Jackson, and Joe Burrow. Out of the four selected, three have had success with their original teams. Two have won MVPs, and two have played in Super Bowls. So our decision comes down to which player has clearly lived up to the hype that we believe that they would achieve after they won the Heisman. And the Oscar goes to... Lamar Jackson separates himself in my eyes having won two MVPs, having winning records across all six seasons of his career, and continuing to develop his additional skills. Cam Newton and Joe Burrow are not able to match these accomplishments, but Burrow may still pass Lamar as their careers move forward. Jackson is part of a well-run franchise with Super Bowl aspirations, and Burrow is similarly well-positioned to push for a Lombardi. But it remains to be seen whether anyone can truly break this curse. Heisman winners are part of college football's season stories. Each of these players take hold of the public narrative and fans establish a unique relationship with them but almost none of them have found success in the NFL. Recent years have seen better results, but it cannot go unnoticed that they have largely underperformed. Is the cause of this due to Heisman voting being biased towards the story rather than on-field performance? Is it being driven by sentiment rather than identifying the nation's actual best player? I believe the answer to both questions is yes. The Heisman Trophy is meant to define the story of a season rather than truly award the best player in college football. As such, winners see elevated status in the draft, are selected by teams more dependent on their talent, and this creates a difficult situation for them. Maybe we'll see another Heisman Trophy winner win a Super Bowl before the curse hits its 50-year mark. This has been The Unlikely Success.